I don't know. Sometimes we sit here and I just press record without old Raj knowing it. We're just go, we go into it. There's not much prep. I'm having a nice cup of coffee. Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, children of all ages, to episode 24 in of uh, Mara Mahistershi. It's a good Friday. Raj's neck is still recuperating. And you know what, Raj? I went for a drive this morning up to the coffee shop, Calico Coffee. The place was just packed. Everybody else is closed. It's a day off for most people. And it was good to see some Mare Machiers out. Friends meeting, families meeting, children running around. The place was just busy, busy, busy. And it's good to have a business like that. But I didn't get any video of, um, you know, driving with some Mare Machine music. So after this, I'm going to have to go out and uh, get, usually I get the video first and then so I'll have to go do a little video session afterwards. So we're on uh, 2005. This is episode part this is part 3 of 2005. We I don't know, like are we going to have to do another one or are we just going to try to do a part 3 or, or we, we could probably do a part 4 and a part 5, oh, you no. know. Oh, we'll, uh, we'll be able to we have to do some shortcuts here. Okay, <coughs> so we're going to do some shortcuts. Roger Como, the local historian. Say, sorry, Raj, say again. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about your little drives around. What about the skydiving? The skydiving. Yeah. How are you going to get up there and do that and get that oh, I, on music? Oh, yeah. Well, I did it, I did it before. Is okay. that what you're talking about? Well, I did it before. I showed you that, didn't I? Oh. I actually, you know what I actually did, Raj? In the year 2000, 24 years ago, this is before the YouTube phenomenon, before the smartphones, before everything was on video. I actually, in college, I made a video resume. I put it onto DVDs and I sent it out. I was trying to, and you know, I'm sure people were looking at me like I was crazy, but now when I look back, I was kind of perhaps ahead of the years yeah. and um but again raj yeah. we're, we're doing this project we're not you know we we're, we're, we're having fun obviously anybody that's watching that can see that we're going through roger's personal collection he has had decades and decades of newspaper clippings local history primarily from the miramichi and surrounding area things that interest raj and it deserves to be um, and we're having fun here it's a project but it's we're doing it as a community building project uh here on the miramichi so there are some miramichiers that are watching and thank you guys for doing that and thanks for keeping it positive like the when i when i run into somebody people are yep. acknowledging and they're having a good laugh and um yeah. they're they're we're, we're trying to just show recent <coughs> history how time is going way too fast like i know times always change but we're in an unprecedented time in history right now where things are skyrocketing there's no wisdom to really roll with the punches the technology is taking us into mm -hmm. realms that we really we're really being disconnected in many ways, and that's what conversations I'm having on the Miramichi since coming home from Vancouver, um, and I'm having this conversation every day. People are seeing it, so mm -hmm. we're trying to just show, you know, the way times were, and we're having fun doing it. Well, I know you heard some complaints about my voice, <coughs> but I, uh, I changed some of the fuses in my throat there, so that might help me. <laughs> well, Raj is uh, dealing with a little bit of a throat issue there, and, uh, um, you know, maybe we can get a microphone in at some point, but I'm not hearing many complaints. People okay. are just saying, tell Roger to speak up. All right, then. <coughs> okay. So we're starting off um, part three, Merrima uh, Hister uh, She. Is that what it is, three? Part three of 2005. Well, now there's a date here on yep. this year of death here. Yes. April the 2nd. Well. 2005. Yep. Well, that is the same date. April the second that I lost my wife Margie here almost three years ago. Three years ago, it's coming now up in three a lad years. Here that passed away on April second. April second, two thousand and five. Pope John Paul the second. You know, think of you know it's um, uh, you know the Catholic icon, the uh, Pope John Paul the second passed away April second, two thousand and five, and here we are on a Good Friday. In the center hall. We're on a Good Friday here, and you know Roger. Roger grew up in a, um, you know, a French Catholic 
uh, family, and the Miramichi has a history in the east coast of Canada. There's a lot of uh, Roman Catholic, French Roman Catholic uh, tradition here. And then there's some photos of Pope John Paul II during some of his visits. He did attend, he did, was in Moncton, we covered that. I forget the year, early 80s. And there he is, folks. So April 2nd, 2005, and Roger just shared a very sad story where it was three years ago, where yeah, Roger's... Uh, go to the back where he's saying goodbye to everybody. Okay, and there he says goodbye. And that's kind of a metaphor for, yep, yep. that's kind of a metaphor for the, um, for the reason that we just showed that so photo. This, uh, <clears throat> this article here is uh, put out by the Moncton Times and it's uh, basically all the history of his life from a child up through his uh, youth and into his final. Uh, right. Yeah, okay. Okay. And on the same day, so did you know that until you looked at that, that no, that was the no, same day that Marty? Right? And, you know, so my generation's a year after yours, Raj, and, you know, take a, take this as, as it may, but, you know, the, that, you know, so the Catholic tradition, you know, things are changing very dramatically in that, like, um, you know, religion in general in our... Uh, in our culture, the younger generations uh, have looked at that very differently, and um, you know I'm one of those people that have, and we've taught, we've spoken about this before, and but there's arguments out there, and I, I think I may have missed this over the years. There's arguments out there of how important a structure such as any, it doesn't matter what religion it is, and you know I'm, I'm not saying good or bad or right or wrong or anything like that. All I'm saying is that there's an argument out there for the structure that it provides for a society and there's people that are actually thinking that it's that's part of the reason that things are really changing quickly a lot of people can't make sense of it community structures are um, kind of falling apart in certain ways that we used to know them so we're figuring it out as we go and that's just what that's just a hypothesis that's out there Think of it as you may. Yeah. Okay, this was a big blast here in Moncton there with these guys here. <laughs> a big blast in Moncton with these guys. Anybody that is listening to music and knows their music knows who this group is. This was 2005. There they are, folks. The Rolling Stones, Ronnie Wood, Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, and Charlie Watts. And I love the Stones, but I love them in the 60s, 70s maybe some 80s. I didn't really uh, care for their stuff after that. I did go to the show, but they came. Parking Plan and Works. There is the site that the Stones came. And I went to the show. It was a nice day. And they rocked it out. And it was good. And I actually went with uh, a former, Log another Logie Villar, uh, Jeff Stimus. Linda's boy. Linda Irving's boy. And there's Mick on stage. And um, Raj got a few things here. We'll show you. Yeah, so the Moncton Times, they put out four, four special editions here on this year event. Oh, wow. Well. Hang on the bottom so the pieces okay. inside don't fall. Okay. So I'm, we're not going to go through too much of it, oh. but Moncton Rocks, there's the site being constructed. And you know what? I've said this, and I'm just going to turn it over here. Yeah. Yeah. I've said this many times. Yeah. I went to that show. The Rolling Stones were great. You know, it's amazing what they were doing at their age, but they had like 15 or 16 people in the band. And so it was, their yeah. sound was kind of getting covered by more modern musicians. Oh, Mick know. was great dancing around, but the Tragically Hip, the Canadian band opened for them, they were awesome. Like for me, that was the highlight. Yeah. Just, I'm just saying. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's the second. There's a second edition. This is, you know, look at what the, the newspaper was doing. They were showing this event. It was a big deal for us to have the Rolling Stones great blow through clippings inside. Blow through town. There's lots of clippings on it. There's a pretty good one here. And there's a good one there of the boys. They came in. Mick Jagger saying hello to everybody. And Mick's, you know, he's a charming guy. He had a Boston Red Sox hat on in that picture. He was a charming guy. But as per mentioned, these boys right here weren't getting the cover or the, the coverage. And there's the Tragically Hip. And I, for one, Raj, have taken in the Tragically Hip's work. I have their full catalog. Gord Downey, the lead singer, passed away. I forget how many years ago it's been now. 
and his he had a brain can, uh, brain cancer, glioblastoma, and that's what actually brings me back to the Miramichi right now. My father uh, just lost his battle with glioblastoma in February. So uh, Gord Downey Rudge had the same uh, oh, the yeah. lead singer of the Tragically Hip. Yeah. Yep. And there, okay. oh, that there's a great this, center. This is the yeah. final one now. Okay. That band you're talking about, there's no doubt about it that they've been mentioned inside of these artists. Oh yes. So they probably got a lot of. Oh yeah, they that. covered the hip. But let's be honest, it was the it was the it was the Rolling like, Stones the the show. show. The there, right? yep. yep. And there is the final thing, Mick Jagger, the biggest bang, Moncton's biggest bang. It was a great show. It was a great set. I really loved it and enjoyed it. There was the crowd. I was amongst that crowd right there, folks. It was an it was a fantastic show, and I went with some friends of mine that were some music fans. There's some photos, music fans all around. There's nothing like a concert that brings people together. The only other thing that's arguable, arguably uh, co comparable, is a uh, sporting event that brings a country together. But you're still veeing against somebody. When people go to a concert, everybody's together. The music brings people together. It's a powerful force. It is amazing, and I really love live music. And Raj, oh, the, the photos and all these yeah, articles. yeah, it was really well done. Yeah, I, I couldn't imagine I had all this here. Yeah, it was great. So right on, Raj, and there are the boys saying goodbye, Mick and Keith, and the Rolling Stones came. They went. And I wonder what they thought of Moncton. Mick be driving her. He's been everywhere. So, <laughs> so this year, just do this year kind of quickly. There was not the yeah. many as we know, but yeah. I think this was held with Nelson. Eh? Yeah, okay. Oh, was it really? I think, you know. Okay, so in 2005, the Canadian Fast Pitch Championships for Midget, the Midget Boys, that's grade 10, 11. Uh, they, Team New Brunswick, okay, just Thomas, and we, it was held in Nelson, okay, and there's the group, there's the team, we're not going to name out the team because there's no real local boys on it, but the reason that Roger probably pulled this out is because of this gentleman right here, okay, there, I remember I played ball with this guy before, he was a good hitter, but this guy here, Louis Henry, um, I actually contacted him. Uh, three or four years, five or six years ago, when I was in Vancouver, I told Roger this. Yeah. Louis Henry's in the Hall of Fame. He has won two national titles, one with a women's team and one with a men's team, the Midget Boys in like the 90s. He was an unbelievable mind of, of the game of softball, and he's an unbelievable coach. He knows how to coach a team strategically to win games and championships and I've had many conversations with him over the years because I, I have I had a team in uh, Vancouver and I was asking him for strategy and the things that he told me were just off the charts he's an amazing guy he's also a local historian Raj he's writing uh, uh, oh, wow. papers and, and he's writing a book or compiling something on his hometown in St. Paul oh, yeah. near Moncton and I'm going to meet with him. Like, So we're supposed to meet up for a coffee. I'm going to go meet him in person. And he, I was always on his radar, he said, as a young pitcher. Yeah. But he told me, he's like, you just were missing something for me, Jamie. You had too much fire in there. I needed a little bit more calm. Yeah. I, I went to check you out. I was scouting you, but you didn't make it. And I was like, well, Louie, you just broke my heart. But he's an amazing guy. And I look forward to actually sitting with him and getting to know him better in person. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things I was going to be doing on my trip home here, Raj. Okay, you do, you do the little Logieville Day quickly. Like okay, Logieville Days. This is July 26, 2005. Logieville Day. This was in the newspaper, folks. Who's that? That's Tanya Wood. Um, well, she must have been a performer of some sort. This is the 12th annual Miramichi... F oh, and then under that was the 12th annual Miramichi Fiddle Festival. And, and that shows Fiddler's Eva Dignam and Alvin Mountain. And that was just some uh, advertisements. Logieville Days and the Fiddle Festival. Right on, Raj. Okay. <coughs> now here we got a various articles on this here section here. <coughs> yeah. On uh, historical facts about Wilson's Point. Okay. Okay. And then uh, how the Scots contributed to the history. Okay. And then we can admit there was a lot of lo lo youth here yep. in, the, in the society. Okay. And then uh, we did a special article on the back page for the uh, 
on the fiddlers. Franco Holland, right? Okay, right on. Okay, so historical facts about Wilson's Point. So everybody that knows the Miramichi knows Wilson's Point over near Bow Bears Island and the enclosure. And uh, this is this was a, an article in the newspaper talking about some of that. Okay, and we will show you. I'll read a few things out here. And it had some. Had, I see Beaverbrook. Uh, the cemetery and its immediate surroundings were owned by St. James and St. John United Church in Newcastle until it was purchased by Lord Beaverbrook in 1946. Lord Beaverbrook also purchased adjacent properties belonging to Margaret Wilson and Donald Fraser. He financed the cleanup on the grounds and the restoration of the cemetery. He then gave the property to the province of New Brunswick to be used as an historic property. So say what you want about some of these guys that made their money and, you know, they're kind of um, maverick kind of guys. And Beaverbrook, you know, you can say negative, but he was an amazing guy. And what he did do, though, was give back to the Miramichi. He actually was a really interesting benefactor guy. And I actually read a book on him that was written by David Adams Richards, and it was very interesting. Yeah. Okay, so here's a, here's a local group of uh, young high schoolers. Um, the Highland Society of New Brunswick Educational Grants 2004 and 2005. And from New Brunswick and the Miramichi, this is who received some grants at a high school. Philip Bremner. Megan Dickinson, Justin Godfrey, Catherine Hay, Andrew Jardine, Jillian Lavoie or Lavoie, Ashley McInnes, Jalma McRae, Laura Matchett, David McClanagan, Tanya Robertson, Robert Taylor, Emily Walls, Jason Waygood, and there they are. And you know what, Raj? This is a time where I was not on the Miramichi. So a lot of these young kids right here in this era, mm -hmm. I don't really know them. Well, Justin is uh, Eric and Heather's young lady. Oh, Justin is? Yeah. Okay, so Justin Godfrey right here, he's a Logie Viller. He is the son of Eric and Heather Godfrey and Logieville folks, and that's a great family, and I'm sure he's doing some good things in the world right now. And on the back of that is the 47th Festival, Festival de Musique Folklorique de Maramachi, <laughs> une celebration de chant et de danse, de lundi, le 1er août au vendredi 5 août 2005. And there is a Francophone Festival of Music on the Miramichi. The title is in French. And there are some fantastic photos of some performers. We have a rich tradition of music on this river. Uh, Irish influence. The Miramichi Fiddlers were there. A band called the New Creation. Ivan and Vivian Hicks. The Harbor Lights Trio. James Morrison. There they were. We have a rich tradition of music. Kitchen party style. Lots of banjos, fiddles. Irish uh, influenced a lot. Guitars. Uh, spoons, Roger plays the spoon, Roger plays the guitar, and Roger also dances. He knows what it's like to pull out his shoes in the middle of a kitchen with people strumming guitars and playing fiddles and playing spoons and performing. So that's just another aspect of this, well, this multifaceted human being that sits beside me right now. No somersaults. No somersaults. And I was just over, uh, I'm at my mom's house as I'm home from Vancouver following my dad's passing, and I'm laying on the couch. I was uh, watching something, I was reading. And the phone rung, rings, mom answers it, and she says, it's Roger. He says he's got the heat on, which means we're doing an episode. So I just walked over. Anybody uh, <clears throat> going to take in the Irish Festival? We'll probably have one of them on, on hand. So we've shown a few of these before. And Roger keeps them all. Celebrate with us. Irish Festival, the 22nd annual Irish Festival. Look at this great cover. Look at how cute that kid looks holding his Irish flag. He looks like he just wants to have a pickled egg and some cabbage and potatoes right now, folks. He got his green on. Uh, oh, the cover photo, Liam Quinn. Oh, that's Patty Quinn's son. 
son of Jennifer and Patty Quinn at the family walking parade in 2004. There he is, folks, the legendary Patty Quinn's young boy, Liam, right there. And that is a brochure from the Irish Festival. We don't have time to go through all that. No, no, no. no but it was, that. you know, yeah. Roger, come on. I'm going to this uh, full page here. Okay. And this is Tara and Chopper. Oh, daughter. That's okay. It. Today she has her own business. Oh, right on. Oh yeah, she's a okay. So here's some photos. Jillian. Jillian. Jillian, here's some photos of that Irish festival. Canada's Chatham is home to Canada's Irish festival. Here's some photos of the 22nd edition. Ladies and gentlemen, great photos. Who are these people? We will be reading some names. This young. Uh, this young girl right here is a Logie Villar, the daughter of Tara Ross, Chopper Ross. Tara is a city councillor. I think she's a city councillor, is that correct? Uh, Chopper Robinson. Chopper Robinson, sorry about that. Um, oh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, the Hurley family joined in the festival's annual family walking parade on Saturday in Chatham. And, uh, okay, so we have from left Mayor John McKay. Miss Irish Rose, Kaylee Grace. And uh, County Monaghan, yep. Mayor, oh, Patrick Treanor, cut the civic reception. Oh, he was from Ireland, come over. Yep. Guest speaker, Mike Duffy, addresses the crowd. I saw Mike Duffy when I was in Ottawa one time when I was a kid and he walked by. He's always a political pundit. He's, he's conservative. He's, he doesn't fake left. He just goes right. <laughs> uh, Paula Foley and daughter, nine-month-old Ivory Gadsden enjoy the Irish music. And there's Jillian. I'll, I'll read about her in a second. And what a wonderful thing. So Jillian Robinson, daughter of Tracy and Tara Robinson, won the red hair contest for her category. And there she is, folks. And you know what? Everybody on the Mare Machine knows Chopper. He was managing O'Donoghue's down there, doing a great job. He's very musical. He used to play ball with us. He's a great guy. And I remember he was doing those Giver on the River things. Oh, yeah. And he was going around doing a lot of good for the Mare Machine. I haven't I seen him. I can't think of his last name, but David there. He always played yeah. a big part in the festival. Oh, there he is. David Wood, Irish Festival Ambassador Patrick Cavanaugh, takes a moment to enjoy a print. There's David Wood. And Roger just pointed him out. He's always a member. Uh, everybody will recognize him that knows about the Irish Festival. So right on. I haven't been in many years, as per mentioned. Right, now we'll, we'll go back uh, to the sports again. Okay. Just show this and then, okay. and then read out Okay. That. So it says, Mayor Mishy is a big part of New Brunswick field hockey team, folks. We have a really excellent tradition. So Roger tells me, like, that's the headline, Mayor Mishy girls, how many of them were on this field hockey team? We yeah. have an excellent tradition in this town yeah. for women's field hockey. Oh my and they've God. always represented New Brunswick, and yeah. they have done so well. And here is the team right here. Canada Games team wins field hockey cup. Team New Brunswick, right on girls, and we have some Miramichiers on that. Canada Games team wins Field Hockey Cup. There are the girls, it's a tough sport, my both sisters played. Okay, we have on this team Ashley Aerosmith, Murray Babineau, Catherine Turner, Christiane Tedio, Ashley Frizzell, Allison Malone, Lori Burgess, Marley, Marley, Merle, it's spelled with a W in there, so I think it's Marley. Marley Preston, Denise Robichaud, our neighbor, the great Denise Robichaud. We have Monique Babineau, Leah Jenkins, Megan Duffy, Kelty Norton, I think she's a Miramichier. Darcy Leggett is a Miramichier. Heather DePlacey, I think, is. Yeah. Chrissy McCarthy, daughter of Walter. If you want to see Walter's wedding photo, episode number two. <laughs> Missing from the picture were Coach Sherry Duera, Coach Glenda O'Neill, Wood, and manager Brenda DePlacey. And Chrissy McCarthy, when my father was sick just recently, and we were nursing him in, in our home at the near the end of his life, she was the extra meal nurse that came and took care of him and us, and she was so great to us. And the photo is a little bit blurry, so we're not going to be able to get a close-up on those girls. But congratulations, girls. Amazing. So all these people are oh, uh, yes. playing a big part in uh, Middle Island. Okay. <coughs> Future plans for Middle Island excite volunteers, folks. And I know by looking right at that fine 
couple right there. I think it's the couple, but that's Mr. Marvin McCarthy. Uh, Marvin McCarthy, or not a couple, sorry. Uh, Marvin McCarthy, part chairman, the late Marvin McCarthy, uh, part chairman and Caroline Daly, a volunteer at the Middle Island Interp Interpretation Center, are delighted construction has begun on the new canteen. Visitors should expect to see more changes to the Middle Island Irish Historical Park in the near future, especially if the funding for $1 million comes through. I had Mervyn McCarthy as a high school math teacher. He also managed uh, some hockey teams that I played on. He's always been in the community organizing and putting his time in and volunteering. I know his two boys, Kevin and Chris McCarthy. I think they were a year uh, younger than me. And, uh, you know, Mar Marvin is the brother of Walter, I think. I don't know. Oh, I think so. Anyhow, uh, I just saw the back of this. Local musician prepares to release new CD. Yeah. Local, and that's Mr. Norman Lero. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Norman Lero was a high school music teacher. And you know what? As a kid, you know, he would be coming. I had him for music, and I wasn't into the theory of music and stuff. And what I did miss was just how really talented that man was until I was older. Very talented uh, musician, and uh, he was always working at the music. And, he, you know, that was his first passion. I, I would argue that it wasn't teaching. <laughs> I don't mean any disrespect by that. <laughs> I gotta watch myself, Raj. I, 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 I'm trying to keep all... Uh, of course we're keeping this positive. Yeah. Um, you know, if we can't... Uh, okay, Downtown Miramichi Rock and Roll Festival, June 29th, July 3rd, 2005. Look at this great photo. This is downtown, folks. The Miramichi, 2005. The party was on. Everybody was in their summer vibes. Vitamin D was hitting their skin. Fish and chips at nighttime at Estes. Little ice cream over at Maury's. And then heading over to the Rock and Roll Festival and having some fun, right? It was a great, uh, you know, times were very different. The party was on. So I think that's a part of it here. Okay. Uh, festival, festival committee, right yeah, <coughs> ready to rock and roll. The reunion band, Mar there's, there's, a, there's a Marilyn Monroe shot right there. What's a rock and roll festival without the great Marilyn Monroe? She lives on to this day, and we just cannot get her out of her heads. Like the society, the world cannot let Marilyn Monroe go. Oh, no. We just can't let her go. Sorry, people. She's just that great. And I'll tell you who else we can't let go is this fine gent right here. Everybody that knows baseball on the Miramichi knows who this is. There's Jason Dixon, local napping boy, that says former pro is coming home. And that was when he was playing with Team Canada. Former Major Leaguer Jason Dixon of Miramichi, Knappen to be more specific, delivers a pitch during last year's Olympic Games in Athens. He was in Greece. Dixon will pitch with the Chatham Ironmen of the New Brunswick Senior Baseball League this year. And uh, I had many friends that played on his team. He, they respected him highly. He was a leader. And for a guy like that to come back to his home team, and uh, contribute to the senior uh, operation. It deserves a lot of credit. He's a he's a very very articulate and respectful man. First, first paragraph. And he deserves a lot of lot of credit. Dixon to join baseball New Brunswick. This is from 2005. Uh, Miramichi's Jason Dixon will start a new job on July 1st when he becomes executive director of baseball New Brunswick. He brings a lot of technical experience along with his enthusiasm and love for the game. And his, yeah, he, he, was an, he was a great guy. And now I think, and I'm, I'm not sure about this, do not quote me, but I think he is the president of, of, yeah. of, of Baseball Canada. Well, maybe. I think it's Baseball Canada, but I'm not sure. It wouldn't be hard to, uh, and you know what, Raj? Too bad there wasn't a little invention out there that we could just type something in and get the answer to that instantaneously. Yeah. So if you guys know of any, like, if you guys can think of an invention like that, you just let me know. You just have to read the serum. Okay. And laugh. Um, you know, oftentimes, you know, we... We all, you know, most of us take for granted the work that our counselors do, our politicians. You know, we all, like, sometimes there's jokes or, you know, like, there's, there's, uh, 
the, the respect is not needed. Most people are in it for the right reasons. And on the Miramichi, we've had many, many great counselors and politicians over the years. And we, they, we deserve, they deserve all the, like so much credit for putting in the work and the hours. We don't, it, it, unless you do it, you don't realize how difficult it is. So Roger is always cutting out and acknowledging these people. It says, newest counselor wants stronger, united Miramichi. Renee Smith at left is sworn in as Miramichi's newest counselor at large by city clerk Jim Lampke at City Hall on Monday afternoon. And Mayor John uh, McKay welcomes Renee Smith as the newest counselor at City Hall. Congratulations, Renee. And, uh, you know, again, Raj, I wasn't around the Miramichi in 2005, like from yeah. the last 20 years almost. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember a lot of these uh, stories. So we talked about this guy, but this is... Oh, yeah. Later on. Okay. Maybe, maybe after his passing. Okay, so this is 2005, and... It's a milestone section of the Miramichi weekend, July 8th, 2005. Yesterday, if you watched, I showed a quick video of Hiram Baisley's uh, museum out in oh, Napa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we showed, and if you're, if you're driving by the um, Siemens, hospital, Siemens Hospital, he built the cupola. the cupola on top. Okay, so here he is, folks. This guy, you know what, Raj? I wish that I this man was still alive. This, this is a guy that I would love to um, have met. A very amazing, capable, interesting, multi-talented man. And look at that thing there. Uh, Lillian Moore at the Creative Grounds the other day told me about this truck. So Lillian's yeah. becoming a, uh, uh, we're mentioning her all the time. How you doing, Lillian? I'm enjoying sitting down, having a coffee with you and your friends once in a while <laughs> over at the, uh, and you said that you have some stuff for her, so you got to start digging into some pictures here and sharing a few of your stuff. But um, she told me about this truck, Raj. Um, mm -hmm. Alton and Minnie Baisley attended the sale of antique cars belonging to Alton's late brother, so Hiram's the guy. And always a crowd pleaser at car shows, Hiram Baisley's wooden car creation was a popular item at the sale. Yeah, Amazing. <coughs> so really interesting guy, and I, I would like to actually... Uh, find out more about that man's life. Like mm -hmm. these are guys, like I, I, a multi-talented guy, eh? Okay, there's some students that are really active. Okay, mm -hmm. two students reviving summer dance group. Right on. Okay, we have a, uh, some performing artists right here. Two students reviving a summer dance group. Okay. And let's see what this was all about. I can see a daughter of a Logie Viller. Uh, Julie Hensby and Mallory Ross embrace after a performance with Miramichi Energy several years ago. And university students, Amy Doucette, Gerard's daughter. And, and I don't know Gerard very well. Like, he, I was gone. So, uh, and Katie McDonald are excited to be reviving Miramichi Energy, a summertime musical dance group that folded in 2001. Uh, talented youth will once again have the opportunity to experience, mener experience Miramichi Energy <clears throat> firsthand thanks to the dedication and determination of three former group members and District 16 Miramichi Energy Supervisor, Eleanor McLaughlin. Tryouts for the team are Saturday from 9 to 3 at James M. Hill Memorial High School. So right on. It's great to see that. And we are trying to show... Raj, that's like our goal with this little program, eh, Raj? Is showing yeah. Yeah. local... Uh, our local town's recent history and all of the different things that have been going on. And ever since doing this project, I am having a, a greater and greater appreciation of of the Miramichi. I've been gone for many years and it's been a really, really excellent, uh, and we thank Roger for his collection. It's it's oh, really fantastic. A friend of mine here, Jimmy, there, like he's Brad in the Burke. Hall of Fame. He welcomed oh, yeah. this guy. A good friend of Roger's, Miramichi welcomes hockey. Great, I could recognize him. I'm a big hockey fan, so I know the old players. That looks like Brad Park to me. Yeah. And it is. The great defenseman Brad Park. The only thing that caused Brad Park from not winning a Norris Trophy was the fact that he played at the same time as Bobby Orr. Ah, uh, that's the goat. That's mm -hmm. the goat right there, yeah. So there's a photo of the great Boston Broom, New York Ranger defenseman, Brad Park. 
and Brad Perk was a member of the 72 Canada that beat Russia. And who's your buddy, Raj? Jimmy Matheson. Jimmy Matheson. What does this say? Hockey Hall of Famer. Brad Perk is welcomed by Jim Matheson at the Miramichi Lions Club. Perk was guest speaker at a fundraiser for the Miramichi Rivermen of the New Brunswick Prince Edward Island Major Midget AAA Hockey League. Another note on Brad Perk, he wasn't the fastest, he wasn't the hardest shot, but he was just a really yeah. top defenseman. And another, you know, Brad Perk was one of the first people to speak out against Alan Eagleson when all those things about Alan Eagleson, about stealing the money from players and et cetera, et cetera, came mm -hmm. out. And Brad Perk was one of the first guys to say, if he's not taken out of the Hall of Fame, I will take myself out. So Brad Perk has some chops and he was a great defenseman. He never won a cup, but he did win that 72 thing. Continuation of Brad Perk. Continuation, hockey great Brad Perk, a hit at the auction. Look at the great Riverman uh, jerseys. The Miramichi Riverman, Roger's son, a middle son, uh, middle child, Josh, was a, was, a, was a member of that team for two years. I think Josh were the assistant captain as a grade 11 student and grade 12 student, top defenseman. We'll get into some Josh stuff when we cover 97 as his team won the, uh, the provincials. So Brad Perk chats with Kevin Barry of Bathurst, who plays Perk in the new movie of the Canada Russia series. Oh, I remember that. This guy here played Brad Perk in that movie. They covered it. The guy that directed that and produced it was an East Coast guy that was associated with the Trailer Perk Boys and all that. Oh. And I saw some filming. <laughs> I was uh, When I was in Fredericton, I watched some filming of that. Oh in, uh, at the Aiken oh, Center, wow. and you know what? You know what scene I got to watch? It was a it was a Mayor Machier, Davy um, Miller. He played Paul Henderson. He's my age, and I saw them shooting the game seven goal. Remember when Henderson went through like three guys, and it was like the most amazing goal. Mm -hmm. That goal. Anyway, I saw them trying to shoot that, and uh, Davy was having a hard time getting it together. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to pause right here, and I'm going to go pour my second cup of coffee. Okay, we are back. And you know what? The way that we've figured, you know, we, we've naturally um, figured out our system on this show, Raj. So, like, I know I'm doing, I'm not, try, I'm not trying to hog talking. This is just kind of how we did it, and kind of it works for both of us. Roger's throat is sore. Um, and I have, uh, I, I, I'm talking a lot <laughs> in my life. Um, a couple of phone calls, a little, uh, cup number two of my afternoon coffee. I prefer the Italian, um, percolator. I like, uh, my coffee that way. Mm. And here's a little trick. Sometimes... If you're having a cup of coffee and there's just that little twinge of bitterness there and you wanna drink it black, rather than sugar, you sprinkle, and, and you gotta go minimal, a little bit of salt. And I learned that from a barista dude on YouTube and he just says it just takes away that little kick and it does, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And apparently I learned, that's how the Marines do it, a little bit of salt in their coffee. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so we're back. Tim McCarthy wins award, Roger and I, our softball guys, as we mentioned before, were from Logieville. Roger's career ended around 50 years of age. I'm 47. I'm 48 this year. I'm still pitching in a Vancouver League fast pitch softball. I love it. I want to play into my 50s because my friends that are over 50, they all go to a tournament in Las Vegas every year, an over 50 tournament. Apparently, it's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so Tim McCarthy wins award. <clears throat> this is written by Doug Underhill. Softball. Nelson's Tim McCarthy has been awarded the Charles Charlie O'Brien Memorial Award. The award is given to the most deserving volunteer who exemplifies the qualities of the late Mr. O'Brien. Those qualities are honesty, perseverance, generosity, giving to the sport, leadership, dedication, and caring. And what an honorable thing to win an award such as that. Congratulations, Tim McCarthy. And Roger and I mentioned several times that volunteering is a free pill. You just go out tomorrow and you help somebody and expect nothing in return. You do it out of the goodness of your heart and then be conscious of how it makes you feel personally. It is a free pill. Side effects are 
positive. Fabulous. You know. Okay, so, and then right below that, Logieville's Frank Weeks was inducted into the Softball New Brunswick Hall of Fame. I was laughing at something else there. Sorry, I just thought of something. There it is, folks. Logieville's Frank Weeks inducted into the Softball Hall of Fame. There's a picture of Roger's neighbor, former neighbor, Frankie, the late Frankie Weeks. That's a picture of Frankie right there. Uh, the father of Jeff, Aaron, and Haley. Haley. Yeah. Okay, so softball, Logieville's Frankie Weeks was inducted into the Labatt Softball New Brunswick Hall of Fame recently. He played softball because he loved the game. He was born in Logieville and has lived his life there and began playing softball with the Logieville Bisons in 1958. He was nicknamed the Scooter and he had a deadly arm from the outfield. The last sentence says, now Frank the Schooner Weeks rightfully sails into the Labatt Softball New Brunswick Hall of Fame, and rightly so. And there he is, folks, Frankie Weeks into the New Brunswick Hall of Fame. Just a second, something came up where I have to pause that. Right now, we'll be back in one second. Okie doke. Okay, Weez be being back, folks. Um, that's my little Newfoundland homage to Brad Gushu, who starts his uh, um, journey into another world championship tomorrow oh, yeah, in curling. Switzerland, curling. Okay, so what do we got here? This is from Friday, May 27th, 2005. The SPCA, what's going on with the SPCA? Most of us folks, most of us, when we're in the uh, company of a pet or an animal, it doesn't take long for those animals to get in deep into our hearts. They become true family members. And these people that put their time in to volunteering on that front, they deserve a lot of credit. General contractor Fred Gallon hands over the keys to the new SPCA building to SPCA president Marg Dawson. There will be a public viewing of the new facility on Saturday from 11 to 5. SPCA, SPCA viewing set for Saturday. So, you know, even though this photo is staged, you know, the general contractor handing over the keys, there's just something to that. Taking a step back in time, the way that we were presenting these things, community, uh, great photo, animal shelter folks, those of us that have pets, I miss my, that's the thing I miss about Vancouver the most, Raj. Yeah. Beautiful city to live in, the mountains, the beaches, all my friends are there, my woodworking is there. You miss your buddy. All I'm thinking about is my dog. Her name is Cha-Cha, and she's a cockapoo, and oh my god, I really miss her. Mm -hmm. I think about my little doggy every day. I'm going to be back in Vancouver soon. Oh, look at this. Lightning destroys church. 75 volunteers form human chain to save some artifacts before St. Anne Church goes up in flames, and St. Anne Roman Catholic Church, a 119-year-old historic building and the pride of this Kent County community was destroyed by fire yesterday. The victim of a lightning strike. Wow. And that was in Kent County. Kent County, St. <clears throat> Anne. Look at the photos of this. And you know, as we spoke before, you know, um, religion and church was a massive part of this, of, of most areas in the world. Okay. I was one that might have you know, disrespected for lack of a better term in my younger years and stuff like that. And I'm learning the value that these churches uh, uh, provide for a community to keep community together. There's something to it. Um, religions are all around the world, Thou millennia, they last for millennia. So before we go too quick to criticize, which, you know, rightly so, there's a lot of criticism to come, but Let's try to think of the value that these places and these structures and these institutions provided for our societies for many, many years. And when something like this burns down in a community, it's a devastating blow for so many people. Okay, <clears throat> just a little bit of an interesting photo here. Oh, right on. Folks, the Special Olympics Timberwolves <coughs> compete at International Tourney. I can recognize this guy with the pads on. <laughs> <laughs> The legendary Ivan King right there, folks, the first guy. He was at every Ironman game behind that backstop. Look at that group of Special Olympians right there, folks. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And let's read some names. We have 
Ivan King, John Godin, or Gooden, so we pronounce it both ways sometimes. Ashlyn Adams, I remember Ashlyn, that's Kenny Adams' son. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Marcus LeBlanc, Daryl McDougall, I know Daryl, oh my God, uh, he lived on the, uh, you know, in the hill area, and I haven't seen him in a long row. Jeremy Tozer, Jean-Guy LeBlanc, Terry Matchett, Randy Dixon, Nick Connell, Mike Hale, Mike Hale walks around Logieville all the time, Mike Clark, and Joseph Bro, George McFarlane, and Chris Dignam, Alan Sutherland. And they went to a, uh, they, they made it to the bronze medal match at the International Special Olympics Floor Hockey Tournament in Montreal. And uh, there was over 29 Canadian teams and one team from New Hampshire in the U.S. took part in the tournament. So they came in fourth. Yeah, a couple of those guys uh, did looked after the, the ball chasing at the Ironman Field. At the Ironman Field, yep. Yeah. Mike and Alan, I think. I think Mike Hale, yeah. Oh, was Al, was Al there? Did I read Al's name? Uh, uh, yeah, well, Mike, Mike Hale. Uh, yeah. Oh, Alan. Alan. Oh, yeah, there's Al. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, we already talked about uh, Ivan. Let's yeah. talk about Al right there. There's Al right there, folks. And anybody in Chatham knows Al. He's been up at Ironman Games forever. He walks a dog named Millie. I patted Millie uh, the other day. He gets his coffees at Creative Ground. Everybody in town knows him. He's a great guy. And um, yeah, he's a he's a good uh, he's a great guy to be in our community. And Joseph Bro, I never saw that guy. That's 2005. There's Joe Bro right there, folks. He was a uh, Logie Villar as well, and he grew up uh, nearby. So congratulations, guys! I think they finished fourth. This is. Uh... Uh, Mara Marshears perform before celebrity judges. And there they are, folks. Some Mara Marshears performing before celebrity judges. We got some names going to be coming at you guys soon here. We have at least five Mara Marshears auditioned in front of Canadian Idol celebrity judges when the hit show held auditions in New Brunswick's Hub City recently. So we have Trevor Young. Frontman of the band Poor Tom, auditioned in front of Canadian Idol celebrity judges recently for a shot at national stardom. He is shoulding, holding the documentation. Um, readers can tune into the season premiere just to see how he did. And Melissa Cormier also auditioned in front of Canadian Idol celebrity judges. I think she's Jerry Cormier's daughter. Oh, Jerry Cormier, the former mayor. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And Canadian Idol host Ben Mulrooney was in Moncton last night to talk with some maritime hopefuls. So there they are, folks. Can't tell you how they did, but I hope that they're still at least just, just playing music is worth it. Maury Patterson's daughter. Oh, right on. That looked like a beautiful photo. Hockey. Mayor Mashir honored in Ohio. Look at how great our, we are just proving it episode after episode of how great our Mara Mashirs are doing all around this province or town, province, um, country, uh, continent, world. Hockey, Mara Mashirs, Pamela Patterson received the Ohio State Women's Ice Hockey Team's Academic Award at the team's recent annual awards banquet in Columbus, Ohio. Patterson received the award for having the team's highest grade point average for her first two quarters at Ohio State University. Congratulations, that's something to be really pa proud of, Pamela. I hope you're doing well in your life right now. Great photo, great, um, uh, yeah. great something to share, Raj. Yeah, we'll, <clears throat> we'll have to give uh, another big uh, round of applause for Harold Adams for putting out another oh, magnificent well. uh, article here on the veterans of uh, the North Shore. And maybe inside you can show Michael Lloyd's dad. There. Okay, I'll we'll do that. We'll put you together and I'll keep you there. Okay, there. thanks, Raj. Harold is great. Full of veterans and their stories. So we've mentioned Harold Adams before, and if you know Harold Adams, uh, he does some work out of the Chatham Library oftentimes, and he's always putting together things. And here's another program that he put together, and this is for our veterans. And you know, we live in a place, and we have to watch it. We are very lucky to be living in this part of the world, and the only 
way that people seem to recognize of how good something is, is when something starts to be taken away from them. We have to be aware that we have freedom of speech, freedom of, re of thought, you know, freedom of expression, all of these things due to many of these people uh, or veterans, celebrations across the North Shore to be held celebrating the year of the veteran, which was 2005. It was the 60th anniversary at the ending of World War II. Our North Shore Regiment, which I'm going to show that right now. Our North Shore Regiment, um, uh, Raj's father, my grandfather, Romeo, was a member of the North Shore Regiment, but he never made it overseas. He was about to be deployed, but his age and circumstances, the war ended before he went. Um, this is an amazing uh, compilation of our local uh, uh, gals and guys that were in the war or are being celebrated as a veteran. I didn't have time to read through everything. Of course, we're just trying to show you what our local newspapers were um, uh, putting together, especially Harold Adams. And here's a guy that we're going to show right here, folks. That is a uh, friend of the family's father slash grandfather, George Lloyd, serving in Holland when the war ended. And he wrote an article in this section, and it was actually written by him. Ferry Road on May 8th, 1945. I was ordered to transport a group of soldiers on leave from various units into Nimagan, Holland, about a three-hour drive by truck from my base. And he said, shortly after I arrived, the Dutch people, I, I don't know how to pronounce this, Nimigan began to celebrate the end of World War II. They were all shouting out the war was over. So I got word of the end of the war from the Dutch people themselves. And we always have a connection in uh, Canada that, you know, we, the Canadians just happen to be the soldiers that liberated uh, Holland. So they always have a, a respect for us Canadians. And who's that one? Well, if I'm, if I'm right... Clinton uh, he, Hayward? Yeah, he used to be <clears throat> our dentist when we were kids. Oh, really? Yeah. And there's Roger Como's dentist, folks. If you were wondering how those teeth were so amazing, that's the answer right there. Another veteran, Clinton Hayward. And these people all have shared stories. So Harold Adams, think about the work of the historian. This, this guy goes around and, you know, the work that it takes to put together something like this... Is a, it's a very special thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wait till, wait till oh. It's 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 now, wonderful. I want you to deal with uh, okay. line, the Lions Club there, okay. New, Newcastle. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. And uh, Newcastle Lions Club <coughs> members, the 40th anniversary uh, in 2005. Here is the Newcastle Lions m uh, Club members from 2005. And I hope you guys can see that. I'm just going to go up nice and slow. And I'm going to read these names out because, sorry for anybody that I'm kind of cutting off. Maybe I can go across like this. Okay. I'll start here and go this way. These guys deserve lots of credit, folks. Some Lions Club members. 40th anniversary. This is the Miramichi leader, Harold Adams. We are recognizing people of the community and times are so different the way we do it now. It's Facebook, it's Twitter, it's Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. It's a very, oh, I dropped something, Raj. Uh, okay, so in that we had uh, John Bracken, Logie Viller. Yep. Wayne Cameron, Merlin Davidson, Clifford Depre. Paul DeWeron, Carl Ferris, Ronald Forrest, Les Fromont, or Fromont. Fromont, right. Fromont, John Gallant, Donald Grimley, William Gokey, Murray Goodfellow, Emile Gauguin Jr., Clark Gilks, Kirk Gallivan, Lloyd Groundwater, Thomas Groundwater, Lyman Hartley, John Harry Hokeman, James Laws, John Lockerbie, Michael Marsland, Lauren Marlowe, Keith Manderville, Daryl McTavish, Gary McIsaac, Norm McDonald, Paul Matheson, David McKay, Frank Mills, Alan Milner, Danny O'Shea, Vernon Potter, Thomas Power, Ben Robertson, David Robertson. Um, you can tell they're brothers. 
Arthur Young, Reg Way, Gary Watt, Andre Villeneuve, William Treadwell, Frank Sullivan, Carvel Sturgeon, Robert Smythe, and Glenn Russell. Well, Raj, thanks for sharing. And I heard somebody, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, we're hearing so many things all these times about men and this and that and the other thing. And, you know, uh, we always come from a family of good men. Um, my uncles, my father, my grandfather, my sister's husbands, their families. And I heard a woman one time on saying, you know, she goes, you know what the antidote to, the, to a bad man is? A good man. Oh. Uh, and I forget who said that, but I just thought it was a good thing. So we always have to recognize good volunteers and good people wherever, the, whatever, however they come to us. We have another star athlete here. Oh, oh that right on. Happen. Okay, <coughs> I'm going to take a little sip of coffee before I read that one. Now, how are we doing for time? We're probably doing okay. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking we're getting close, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Maramashir to wear New Brunswick colors. This is from April 22nd, 2005 edition of, this is from Times and Transcript by Doug Underhill. Bremner looking forward to playing softball at Canada Games, folks. We have a Canada Games athlete about to be mentioned here. And this is Nappin's Megan Bremner is the only Miramichir to be selected to Team New Brunswick. And she will head to Regina and August uh, 6, uh, or yeah, at August 6th to the 20th. Games will be played at the Elks Athletic Field in Moose Jaw. Well, congratulations, Megan. I hope you're still playing softball because it's a great sport. And on the back of that, just I just saw this as I put it down. Look at this guy right here. Two-time or three-time Stanley Cup winner with the Chicago Blackhawks, Corey Crawford, used to play for the Moncton Wildcats. So that was on the back of that. Yeah, he just retired here a few months ago. Oh, did he? Yeah, right on. And there's a big event here in 2005. Oh, uh, yeah. Membership Country Hall of Fame oh. induct uh, all these members. Oh, that's just awesome. A, just a bunch of them. Okay. Mention their names. Right? Oh, right on. <laughs> 11, this is from the Miramichi Weekend, April 22nd, 2005. 11 inducted into Miramichi Country Hall of Fame, folks. There is the photo of them all. Here are their photos. And we will read out those names in one second. I know that person. Right on. Who do we have, Raj? We got Jimmy Cunningham. Amos, Am Amos Amy Jardine. Yep, Amos. Francis Bolo. Bollier. Bollier. I, I always have a hard time <laughs> pronouncing no, he that. Plays, he plays a fiddle now for my father when he step danced. Oh, right on. And, our, and Roger's dad, my grandfather, Romeo, was a step dancer. That's where Raj... And, and the band that, that provided the background was Joe McDonald. Joseph McDonald, band. the Gaston brothers, Matilda Murdoch, the great Logieville artist... William Bill Mullen, who, if anybody doesn't know, he had created the Miramichi Old Opry building yeah, or something, yeah. an amazing facility. Val Daigle, Bill Summers, Harry Pond, Russ Wheeler. Okay, so so your father was friends with Francis. Oh, yeah. Bollier? Yeah. Okay, and he, so Francis... And he played uh, fiddler for Denny, Denny that just stepped in. And Denny was Roger's brother who died in a car accident in 1969 at the, years, at the age of 19. Denny was also a dancer. Oh, yeah. Uh, Francis Bollier started playing music at the age of four. In the early years, he often played the fiddle at house parties and community gatherings. He uh, became a regular of the famous Sanatoria Club and traveled across the province playing at variety shows and benefits. Bollier played backup for many famous fiddlers, including Ivan Hicks and Joe McDonald. He passed away. He was already dead in 2005. Started out playing at many of the local dances and house parties in his community. He headed up his own band and excelled in fiddle, banjo, guitar, and bass. Many of his former band members are now members of the New Brunswick Country Music Hall of Fame. McDonald was one of the founders of the Sanatoria Club. We're going to get into some Sanatoria Club, hopefully, into the future. There are those two gentlemen who we just featured. We'll be featuring Matilda in a future episode. And uh, Roger was a member of the Sanatoria Club. And like again, Roger, so we got... Okay, so our free pills that we keep mentioning, we got exercise, nature, music 
and volunteering. And if you're smart, you can do all of those. You can take all of those four free pills that have the only side effects or positive at once. So if you get out into nature and you go for a run while playing your harmonica and delivering a package to somebody that needs it, you're doing all four at once. <laughs> so that's what you need for your prescription right there, folks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, okay, so what do we got here? Okay. And, you know, obviously this didn't happen on the Miramichi, but this happened in 2005, and we'll just give a quick uh, uh, rings around the Red Sox. And there he is, folks, arguably the greatest hockey player that has ever lived, Bobby Orr, throwing out a first pitch at Fenway Park in 2005. Bobby Orr was on the Miramichi, and he has, uh, you know, there was some connections with Peter Nevin here in 67. He was at a, uh, a local banquet, and it just said, it was a linebacker, that's Red Abrushi and former Boston Bruins defenseman Bobby Orr, were Boston sports legends who threw the first ceremonial pitch for the yesterday at Fenway Park. Fenway Park. I showed uh, I showed Ironman Park yesterday video before the snow and after the snow, and uh, there's, a, there's a great family that came to the mirror machine from mm -hmm. far away. <coughs> okay, so we're gonna do another. Yeah, we. Okay, so. Once again, Roger, thank you for sharing all of these things. This is really, really spectacular. This is a before and after photo, 50 years in Canada. And there they are, folks, 50 years ago. And there they are 50 years later in 2005. And we are going to share their story right here. A great, I, I, these are blind to me. I don't know what comes each and every episode. Oh, I see who they are. Monday marks the 50th anniversary of, oh, I'm not, I'm going to butcher this name. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to say Mooch and Ulki Bosma's arrival in Miramichi from Holland. Yeah. Maudi, they called them Ma Maudi and Jeep, yeah. as they are affectionately known locally. Left Rotterdam, Holland, with their family aboard the SS Waferman on April 1st and landed at Pier 21 in Halifax, Nova Scotia, on April 10th. The following day, they arrived in Newcastle. The family photo at Top Show's back row, Alice 11, Tineke 14, Johanna 6 on his father's lap, and baby Mikey on her mother's lap. The photo at bottom is a more recent picture of Mochi, Madi, and Jeep Bosma with their family. And Johannes, we know him as John. I actually ran into yeah. John's son, Garrett, at Creative Grounds the other day, and I'm gonna be connecting with him. So there's a great story. And John, right here, absolute gentleman, does a lot of historical work on the Miramichi, writes some books, and he's a great guy to talk to. If you ever see him walking around town, don't be shy. He likes to talk Miramichi history and stuff. Great family, great story. So 50 years, so they came in 1955. Well, great story. Thanks for sharing, Raj. Yeah, that's really hard. Yeah, Jeep Bosma. Yeah, Garrett just texted me. I have to, I have to um, reply to him. We got all this stuff here and all. So do we have? We talked about that. Yeah, yeah. Do we have? Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe we share one more. Okay. Let's we have this one here. Okay. Because this is in color. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can share this, but I'm saying maybe we share one more on Mr. Um, oh, another, another. Uh, Oh, right on. I see this now. Okay, Miramichi Leader. This is from March 29th, 2005. We have some milestones. Firefighters host annual remote control rally, folks. The annual, it takes all kinds to make a community go. Many different interests. Look at this. The annual remote control rally. There he is, folks. Logie Viller. Timmy Stevens. He's always, uh, uh, I always knew him growing up. Comes from a great family, mother Karen, father Alan, two sisters, Jennifer, local real estate agent, and Stephanie, and Timmy Stevens. Tim Stevens gets his son's robot ready for racing. Um, Connor Keown gives youngest participate, participant Riley Keown a little advice, and uh, that's a great little story to show. I haven't seen Timmy around in a long time. I wonder how he's making out. There he is. 
2005, Timmy Stevens. Um, so, why don't we... Yeah, it just says, um, we're not going to read the whole thing, uh, but there's a great photo right here. Several Miramichiers, family members, and fellow city councillors attended the ceremony when Councillor Paul Dawson was inducted into the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame, or was it softball? Okay. Baseball? Okay. He is shown here with his wife Betty and family, and there he is, folks. There's a photo from that. And this is kind of a, there, there's a photo at that time. And, um, and the reason that we're saying that is because uh, the area was saddened by loss of softball pioneer in 2005. Paul Dawson passed away in 2005. He was a, he was a deputy mayor. He was a organizer, a volunteer, and he had a big part to do in our softball community here. He was a great man. And, uh, you know, it was, it's always sad to lose such a person. So that happened in 2005. Uh, that looks like an interesting story, Raj. So, you know, um, I'm sure it was a sad time for that family. And, uh, you know, Paul's son is married to a Logieville girl. Tommy. Okay, yep, Tommy. Uh, old Miramichi Courthouse sold to Grand... How do you say that? Deek? Dig. Grand Dig Man. Uh, sold the old courthouse, folks. I think it's apartments now, isn't it? Or condos? Yeah. yeah it's a great building. Look at that. Imagine being able to have the budget to do something with that. I, I always love that building. I've never, I don't think, ever stepped foot inside, Raj. Oh, no. No. Now, this is where they broke ground here for the Eagles. Oh, center. the curling, yeah. yeah. So we got okay. big photos here, and this is basically in color there. Okay. There it is, folks. The Eco Center breaks ground. That's the curling center over in uh, uh, Nordine, Nordine yeah. you know, near French Fort Cove. So I, I, the Newcastle Farmer's Market's in there uh, Fridays from 10 to 2. Really a beautiful building for curling. Miramichi Beta Vin MLA, Michael Tanker Malley, and the Miramichi MP Charles Hubbard. And French Fort Cove Eco Center Committee Chairman Brian Jones and Miramichi Mayor John McKay turned the sod yesterday for the new French Fort Cove Eco Center. There they are, folks, with their shovels, turning the sod. There's always those ceremonial pictures with the politicians and the shovels. I think it'd be a good idea, okay, to get in those ceremonial. Here's how we, here's how we got to change the ceremonial pictures. This is just an idea. Get the guys that are actually going to do the shoveling yeah. in the photo with the politicians maybe standing beside them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just joking. I know the work it takes to organize, and these guys have done great work on the Miramichi. There's Tanker right there, folks. Yeah, Tankers. This, this the show is uh, the snowy weather. They had to do that. Again. It was a snowy day. The boys all went for a coffee afterwards at the, uh, what's that little hotel up on the... Right next door, remember? It's it's uh, the, hot, the Miramichi, oh. or the, the the Newcastle, I forget what it's called, but there's a, they do breakfast and stuff up there. But there they are, folks, doing some uh, breaking of ground ceremonies. And I have not curled over there, Raj, and I look forward to doing it. That's honoring Kelly's. Oh, this is a logo. Okay, congratulations, R.W. Kelly Thermo, folks. There they are, folks, a local uh, business that does that works on glass. They're the glass boys on the Miramichi, wow. and it's one of Logieville's only kind of businesses. Rudy Henstrich of R.W. Kelly Thermo accepts award from Paul Bourgeois uh, for reaching top 10 dealer status. Ron Kelly has operated R.W. Kelly for 37 years in Miramichi, and we congratulate Ron and Rudy for first-class service to their customers. And it's you know that that place has been down on uh, it's there's a there's, they have a facility on on Wellington, yeah. and then they do the windshields down on uh, Water, Water Street. Street. And I was a newspaper kid. I was delivering newspapers around for about five minutes. I just wasn't yeah. the right kid to do it. And every time I walked in, I had to drop a paper off to Mark 
and the boys in there doing the windshields yeah. and it was the best place to go because I was just a little kid I'd go in and give the paper Mark would just yeah. dig into his pocket and yes. give me a handful of change oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the best tips I always got so this is an elongated article okay. here yep. we'll have a couple here if we got room for anything else we can stop now well or... we can let's just keep going like I mean we're okay. gonna have a we're 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 gonna be over an hour we're gonna be like an hour and 15 minutes here oh that's well, okay maybe we should just save it for this crowd Oh, do we have, um, do we, is there, is there more to do, for, like, is that all, do we all cover all that? Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Just, well, let's just do a couple more and we're going to wrap her up. We got, okay, like, we'll, uh. We'll start it off with the mosquitoes. Okay. So. The mosquitoes, black lights. Yes. Yeah, so, September 2nd, 2005, Chatham AAA Ironman okay. Win Provincial Crown. This baseball program, Miramichi, more specifically Chatham, the classic Ironman uniforms, the red, the white, the blue, have won, I'd like to know how many provincial titles this, this operation, the Ironman have won over the years. Okay, so on this team, mm, I got friends that played on provincial titles out of, okay. Uh, I'm not gonna read, I'm just gonna read the, the roster. They went to Glace Bay for the Atlantic Championships. Okay, here they are. Jeremy McDonald, Wayne Morin, uh, Gary Hallahan, they were the coaches. Jamie Leggett was the coach. Danny Dynan was a coach. He was uh, an honorary pallbearer at my dad's funeral. Brian Matchett, Jordan Hallahan, Shane Dynan. He, Shane Dynan has a company right now in Bushville. Is that Shane right there? Yeah. Uh, middle row, Ranson Harris, Nigel Augustine, Justin Morin, Billy Gaston, Bradley Gallant, Nolan Leggett, Kevin Loger, Brett Malone, son of Vicky and Jimmy Malone. Cody Dixon, Matthew Loge, and Nick Leggett. Congratulations, boys. There's nothing better than a baseball. I always say, of all the team sports, ball teams have the best photos. It's an amazing sport. I love it, and congratulations, boys. What's going on here? Chatham Subway Midget Ironman captions, capture silver in Trois-Rivières, and that was the... Baseball, right? That was baseball. The Chatham Subway Midget Ironman returned from Trois-Rivières in Quebec with a silver medal after losing 9-2 to Team Ontario in gold medal. We covered that team yeah. that won the Provincials. Yeah, there's no yeah. team photo. No, there's no, no team photo. There's no roster. We already mentioned their roster, I think, yesterday. Yeah. So right on, boys. So that's the mosquitoes. Now this one here is the black flies. And here's the black flies. The Chatham Bantam Triple A. Ironman win New Brunswick champion. So, so this is 2005. Baseball in Chatham. It was a great year. Ivan King would have been up there watching some games. Look at her flag in the background. And um, on that team, we had, they won the New Brunswick championships in Bantam. Okay, so this is 2005. We had Walter McCarthy was the coach. The manager was Kevin Flanagan. Robert Walls was a coach, and so was Chris Noel. We have David Mortimer, David Flanagan, Brett Buckley, and Aaron Noel. Robert Gallant, Sonny Newman, Corey Kelly, and Jim Russell. Patrick Loge, Jeff McCarthy, Tyler Hilchey, and Jamie Walls. And there they are. There's nothing better than a baseball or softball team photo, after, especially after winning a championship. And uh, good, good for you guys. They were in, um, where was that even held? Anyhow, what do we got? Oh, quick little flash here. Okay. Roll five. This is 2005, not your average Barra, Leggy legend, Yogi Barra. This was his 80th birthday in 2005. There's Jorge Posada. He was the he was the catcher at the time with the Yankees with the legendary Yogi Berra and arguably America's most quoted person of all time. We're all here. Oh, it ain't over till it's over. I love Yogi Berra, and I tell you what, Netflix. There's an amazing documentary okay. on the Yogi Berra. His granddaughter produced it. It's worth a check out. Very well done. It ain't over till it's over. Never answer an anonymous letter. These are from Yogi Berra. Um, I usually take a two-hour nap from one to four. When you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> uh, I didn't really say everything I said. You can observe a lot by watching. You mean now? Um, yeah, somebody would say, what time is it? And Yogi's answer was, you mean now? Yeah. 
Uh, the future ain't what it used to be. <laughs> it gets late early out there, and that was because a shadow used to come over a ball field. I think it was like a, a polo grounds or something like that, and the, the, there'd be a shadow for the left fielder. Nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded. That was in reference to an, a restaurant. So I'm ugly. So what? I never saw anyone hit with his face. <laughs> yeah. Baseball is 90% mental. The other half is physical. And uh, th those are Yogi Bear is amazing, but yeah, you're gonna come to a fork in the road. Well, take gotta, it. You gotta mention this one. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So the uh, uh, New York mayor's oh, right. <laughs> uh, wife said to Yogi, "My God, Yogi, you look pretty cool." He said, "You don't look too hot yourself." <laughs> <laughs> you know where that story comes from? It's actually when Yogi was given the key. To the city of New York, and apparently it was a sweltering day. Oh, I didn't see it there. Yeah, yeah. And then she was like, "Oh my God, Yogi, you look pretty cool today." And he's yeah. like, "You don't look so hot yourself." <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I I just realized, Raj, it's oh. 2005, yeah. and we didn't cover one of our sponsors. We're going long today. This is gonna be a long episode. So, fine art students. This is from the Sackville Tribune, and we do it because it's one of our sponsors. Roger's daughter, Amanda. Fine art students worked to be installed at Maritime Atlantic Wildlife Institute. They were working on this amazing sculpture-like uh, installation here. And there's Roger's daughter, Amanda, right here, our sponsor. And that's their creation. If that thing is still up on the wall, I am going to see it next time I go visit my nephew in... Uh, Maybe a phone call. In Sackville, yeah. Students from the sculpture program at Mount Allison University have collaborated to design and create a permanent artwork, well, it says permanent, to be installed at the Maritime Atlantic Wildlife Institute, and that was in Co uh, Cookville. So it's near Sackville, it's in uh, Cookville. Out in the country. It's yeah. out in the country. They have an animal hospital there or whatever. Oh, right on. Recovery. Oh, re uh, recovering recovery. animals. And we did cover the SPCA today. Yeah. And... Amanda's one of our sponsors, and this is not, she might not be happy with what we're showing here, but I actually, okay, this is good. This is good. Okay, so yeah. Roger said you guys were at Montana's and Moncton eating? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Roger's kind of dozing off a little bit, tired or whatever, and he was working hard all day, his whole <laughs> life. This man is in stop working. And, and Amanda, you know, sometimes at those restaurants, they have crayons and, and uh, paper for, uh, and tablecloth. The, for the tablecloth, and the kids, they give crayons, and kids can draw, and anybody does stuff. So Amanda just quickly sketched that with a crayon, and that is of our local historian, Raj. Raj, get your face up maybe closer. <laughs> That's pretty good, okay? <laughs> so Amanda is a fine artist. She works as a nurse at the hospital, and she does drawings. She did this painting of Raj right there. She has done sculptures, amazing work in her, inside of her house. And, you know, why not uh, uh, get a local artist like Amanda if you're looking for a gift for somebody to do a, a drawing of somebody's face or something like that? And, um, you know, Amanda... Uh, enjoys doing those types of things and it's it would be just a great gift for somebody it takes her a few hours and you know you got to think about how special of a personal gift something like that would be and you know amanda sponsors this show by just being a great cousin a great daughter a great citizen and um uh you know if you're looking to get in touch with amanda you know you just look up roger Cummo's name in the local phone book and give him a call he just never ever lets the phone ring he just he pick it up the first ring every time so we're we are getting this is gonna be a we're we got a lot going on here yeah, Raj, but we're gonna have to just say goodbye to 2005 yeah okay. do it a time what do we got here samantha robisha she's uh roots here in logieville samantha robisha honored in songwriting competition uh, she's a fiddler she's a fiddler i remember we covered her before Rivi riverview fiddler samantha robisha has earned second place in the teen category of the international songwriting competition for her song Elmo's Real. She was 17 at the time and congratulations and she has Logieville roots and I think she's still doing music, eh? Yeah, she's a granddaughter of Elwa and Erdie Robichaud. Elwa and Erdie. Erdie Robichaud of Logieville yeah. and a historical... This, this is big. This is a, yeah. this is a big Erdie. Okay. Culture. Well... Cash it in. We're cashing it in. Yeah. No, no, no. I no, I know. I just, I'm just looking. Shut down. I know. I, it's hard to shut down when you see all this stuff, though. There's still more. Yeah, but we, we can't go anywhere. Okay, so here's what I think we should do. we got to come back for a part four of 2005. So I'm going to think about the editing here. Yeah, the, uh, our next uh, 
issue is going to be about when the Lord Beaver Book Arena turned 50. Okay. 50th anniversary. So, uh, you know, you know. What's going on there that day, that weekend? The 50th anniversary for Lord Beaver Brook Arena. Oh, wow, look at that. So, you know what, Raj? Yeah, we're going to have to do a part four here. We're This is a, this is a long part three. So, we're going to shut her down right there. Raj got some friends coming over for supper. He's up there. He's got to get his pots and pans out and cook up. He's got to get the garlic frying, or the onions first. Then it's garlic afterwards. And, you know, he knows how to do it. Don't worry about that. Um, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the near future. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys out on the old Miramichi. Okay.